Hey everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason Bees. Today, I'm really excited to show you and teach you how to clean your own mason bee cocoons. If you're hosting your own bees in your yard and you're not renting, where our program is you're releasing bees and you're renting the nesting material, and then we come back and clean everything for you. If you're cleaning your own bees, I wanted to show you how to do it on a small scale. We clean three million mason bees, and so we have all the big equipment to clean everything, um, but I wanted to show you on a small scale how to clean. Uh, the best time to do it is in the fall, so October or November when it's still cold outside. Your little mason bees have formed their silk cocoon. Those cocoons are waterproof and hardy, so it's a really good time to open everything up and clean. Um, a lot of people are using the wrong nesting material. I know that these are adorable, cute little bee houses or bee hotels. Um, so logs with holes drilled in it or bamboo, you just, it's, you can't open and clean these very easily. I'll show you kind of how we, we open some of these up and I'll show you how to do that. But these, these houses are not the proper nesting material. You want to use nesting material that is, that you can easily open every fall. And so I'll show you some examples today on how to do that. But why? Why clean your mason bees? Well, you've seen some of our videos on all the different predators that can get inside your nesting chambers. Pollen mites are really uh, invasive. We see a lot of pollen mites when we're cleaning out our blocks. Houdini fly are on the rise. That's a kleptoparasite. You know, you put these little bee hotels out and those kleptoparasites, mono wasps and Houdini fly, they're like, woohoo, easy access to all your bees inside. So you don't want to provide easy access to the Houdini fly and mono wasps. You want to make sure you're cleaning out those little predators and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then you have um, chalk brood. That's another fungus that the bees collect on the flowers. And so it's really important to clean. And I always get asked, well, in nature, bees aren't cleaning their own houses. Why are, why are we having to clean ours? Well, you're putting out a bee hotel, a little bee house. It's really cute. Your, your whole block is full of bees, <clears throat> but it adds easy access for those predators to get into your bee house. In nature, those mason bees are camouflaging their homes. There's, it's gonna be really hard for a predator to find those natural cavities that your bees are laying in. But when you're providing a home, you have to, to also maintain and clean your bee house. These little houses are sold all over the place. There's never any instructions that go along with them on proper care and maintenance. Just like our honeybee hives need proper care and maintenance, so do your solitary bees. It's not too complicated, um, so I'm gonna show you today how to do that on a smaller scale. I have everything set up here. Um, we, I went to the dollar store. I got everything you see here, except for this container, everything here at the dollar store. Really, really inexpensive to do. So I have um, a gallon of water and I have bleach where we're gonna use two teaspoons of bleach in my gallon of water. We poured this out already, so I didn't, sp <laughs> I didn't spill it while I was doing the video. So there's my bleach water. You're going to do a very mild bleach solution. And what that does is that will remove uh, the pollen mites and the chalk brood that still might be remaining. And then I have my clean bucket of water. And then this is where I'm going to extract all the cocoons. I'm going to show you how to open up tubes, bamboo, and stacking trays. And then we're going to dry them. And I'm going to show you how to candle them and look at them. And then how you're going to store them in, ref in your refrigerator um, with a good humidity control over winter and then you're going to be able to put those nice clean bees back out in your yard the next spring. So all right, let's dive in. I'll start opening up some blocks and showing you how to clean your mason bee cocoons. So the best type of nesting material to use for mason bees are the kind of nesting material that you can open every fall and clean where you're sterilizing your wood block and or you're replacing your cardboard tubes. And so we have a stacking tray here and then I have some cardboard tubes that some of our hosts return for us to clean through our cleaning process. So I'm gonna open these today and show you how to extract everything out of uh, the stacking trays uh, and the cardboard tubes. And then I'm gonna show you how to open up, I'm gonna try to open up some of the bamboo that we are gonna pull out of some of these bee houses that are not the proper nesting material. And um, hopefully we won't find, I know this big one over here scared me, uh, this huge spider came out of it because I think it's been outside for a while and it wasn't happy that its nest was disturbed. And so um, I may have squealed a little bit when I got into that one, but it's always interesting what we find when we open up the nesting blocks. So let's do this one. So this is one of our stacking trays, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do your own stacking trays. Speaking of little critters, there's an earwig. You find all sorts of things 
when we do our big harvest every year with three million bees, whew, there's some doozies that I find. Um, and I'm not a big fan of wasps either, so hopefully there aren't any in this block. This is why it's fun when, when you send your blocks back to us, we'll take care of all that for you. So this is just the back. I'm just gonna toss things on the floor because I wanna open this up. Let me move this. Hello, little earwig. Okay, so let's open up this block and show you the inside. Ah, so this is why you have to clean and harvest your mason bee cocoons. So here you see really healthy cocoons. Uh, these are pollen mites. And then this is Houdini fly. And Houdini fly is on the rise. The only way to get rid of these Houdini fly is to clean this whole thing out. So you can see here, this is the Houdini fly frass, which is called poop. And you can see all the Houdini fly underneath. I've done a lot of videos about predators, so I'll link all those down below. But it's really important. So here's the pen. So there's a pretty high tech advanced thing to get these blocks cleaned out. So I bought a couple things from the dollar store. One, just a simple pen. You can easily push through the cocoons and push them out into your tray to collect all the cocoons, all the Houdini fly, all the predators and stuff that are coming out. Um, the other thing you can try that I got at the dollar store that also works is this little spoon that I found. It has soft, soft material on it. So you can also use that to push it out. Whatever works for you, whatever is easier for you to hold and extract, this kind of has a nice handle on it for me to push everything through. So if you look at this block right here, you can see how this block is full of predators. There's maybe one, let's see, there's one, two, three cocoons that are viable. Oh, four. Four cocoons that are viable. Everything else, those are pollen mites. I'll show you some close-up of that. Those are Houdini fly larvae. So all of this needs to be cleaned. This is why, you guys, it's so important to clean your blocks. So here we go. There's more Houdini fly. I actually prefer this pen method. It's easier to, to poke through. So I'm going to do this with all these, the, all these trays that I'm going to open up here. Um, I'll speed through this so that... We don't take, oh, look at all those pollen mites. Yikes. This is why you clean. Oh my goodness. There's a couple of healthy cocoons there, but again, a lot of Houdini fly. So I'm just gonna clean all this out. And then I'll finish doing the rest of the, these trays. There's several down here. But let me show you while we're at it, how to clean the cardboard tubes. So a lot of people will use these cardboard tubes if they have the bee house that's not proper, the not, not the right nesting material, you can use these tubes to fit inside the holes because then you can easily pull these out. These holes aren't the right size, which is another thing when you buy these houses. Sometimes these blocks aren't the right size. You can see the bamboo has all different size holes. So um, anyway, so let's take a look at unraveling get one here okay so there's a simple little cardboard paper tube and these come in and you just pull them out of your house and you unravel them so a lot of our hosts that host their own bees use these paper tubes because they just replace them you're not obviously going to be able to use this tube again you just throw it away when you're done and then you place out clean tubes at the end so ooh, there's some clean cocoons just little brown stuff that's just the mason bee frass which is their poop and then there's houdini fly So you can see all of this stuff just gathers in here. So you're going to throw that away. So we're going to unravel a couple of these and then we're going to show you how to clean everything. So again, there's clean cocoon. There are a bunch of Houdini fly in this one. I have a video that I made on what is that inside my block. Um, I'll link it down below in, um, under the, underneath this video so that you can take a look and see like what helping you identify what you're finding in your block. Um, but as you can see, I'm extracting all the cocoons, all the frass, all the Houdini fly, all the pollen mites. Um, these little tubes are also the kind of tubes that go inside holes that you just insert. In the back, they have the uh, backing on them. So this is the front, this is the back when you're putting them in. And these also unravel. Unraveling is so time consuming, but we'll show you how to do it. So we unravel just like we did with the paper ones. And inside here are the paper tubes, if you can see that. So 
we just need to get to that paper tube and then pull it out and I'll show you. So there you go. Now you can see the paper tube. You need to pull it out. Uh, let me go a little further. Okay, so we're gonna pull this out. Ugh. Okay. All right, there we go. So now we've pulled out this tube. I'm gonna pull out the back of it and then we'll unravel this one. This is hard, we don't wanna hurt the bees inside. Okay, that's not coming out. Sometimes you need to get this started with some scissors to get it going. And then once you get it going, you just unravel it. Whew, that one's a hard one. All right, there we go. Now we're going. There's Cocoon, nice healthy one. There's Houdini Fly. There's a nice healthy Cocoon. All right, one two cocoons out of this whole roll. All right, so I'm gonna now show you, um, I'm gonna uh, finish extracting all of these out of the tubes and the out of the blocks so that we have more to clean, and then I will show you how to give your bees a bee bath. Okay, I also want to show you how to pull out the bamboo that you have in these little bee hotels. Um, usually the bamboo is super glued all the way in the back, so it's going to take an effort for you to do this, and hopefully no creepy crawlies will come out at me. Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I'm holding it right up to me. Um, so we already started, and we got some pliers, and we were wish wiggling and trying to push these out. So we, we did get a few out just to kind of show you, um, but you are going to have to get it started, and then you're going to pull them out which we already did for the video because I didn't want to sit here and struggle too hard. But these are the bamboo. And again, this is not the proper nesting material. Mason bees need longer tubes to lay their babies in. So when you see stuff like this, this is you know, not the proper material. All right, so you can see all the rest of these are super glued in here. So you're gonna want to pull those out. All right, so now I'm gonna show you, or I'm gonna attempt to show you how to crack these open and get to the cocoons inside. So um, like a crab shell, you're just gonna take your pliers. This is a big, thick one. You're gonna take your pliers and you're gonna crack it. Woo, there you go. And then you're gonna open it up and inside are cocoons. So then you're just gonna push these out. Oh, where's my pen? Here's my pen. You push these out and extract them. So here's another one. That one's hard. Again, this is why it's so easy to use the proper nesting material. Ugh, I can't even get that one. Oh, there's a cocoon right there. Let's see if I can try another one. Oh, there we go. Careful to not cut yourself when you're doing this. I have this little tool that I can use to crack it open even more. Chisel works if you have like a small chisel. I just don't want to cut myself right now. Oh, guys, these are so difficult to open. You know, I did a video last year on how to transition from old nesting material to new, and I'll put that video in the link. It's essentially where you take these bee hotels and you sprinkle sawdust on them. You leave them out in spring. The bees will emerge. The sawdust will fill the holes, and then you want to get rid of this nesting material. I'm having challenges opening up this bamboo. I'm sorry, I wanted to do a few more, but you get the idea. Oh, there we go. Whew. Let's see what's in here. There we go. There's a couple cocoons. All right, so you get the idea. So this is if you have the bamboo and you're wanting to start over and start using the clean nesting material, this is how you get the cocoons out and save what's inside. Um, I think that one was too hard. So that's the general idea. Um, okay, so I decided to just extract the stuff out of the trays. 
because these take so long to do, I'll do these later. Um, but for the purpose of showing you how to wash your own bees, let's go quickly and do this. Um, so I wanted to show you, we, um, out of the 3 million that we've already washed, I wanted to pull out some of the clean cocoons. So this is what clean cocoons look like. I'm not gonna put them anywhere near the pollen mites. This is what the pollen mites look like. This is all the dirty bees. So this is the dirty cocoons and the mud and the Houdini fly and the pollen mites. And I didn't see any chalk brood in this chamber. No, nope, that's a cocoon. Um, but this is the difference. This is the stage that you want to get to. You want clean, healthy cocoons where there's no pollen mites or predators on these cocoons. So I'm going to show you how to get to this stage. All right, the final thing that you need to do if you have stacking trays that you're using is you're going to want to sterilize the nesting material. You're not going to want to put your stacking trays in the bleach water because that'll expand the wood and then you won't be able to restack them. Um, so when you have wood trays, you can use a flame just like we do on a high scale. We have this massive fire flame station that sterilizes all our blocks. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it with our little flame lighter here. Um, so you're going to want to just light each section and move it slowly. And what this is doing, you can hear it crackling, is this is killing the remaining pollen mites and any chalk brood fungus. And if you have the cardboard tubes, of course, you're not going to be cleaning those. You're just going to be um, replacing those with fresh, new, clean cardboard. That's kind of fun. You just want to make sure you're getting every single nesting chamber. And then you'll restack these trays and rebond them with whatever ever method you use, whether it's a big rubber band or you have straps. Um, but you're just going to restack these trays, store them, don't put them outside until springtime, and then you'll put them back out and you'll have nice clean nesting material. Now you want to make sure you're doing it on both sides. So that is how you sterilize your wood nesting blocks. Now I'm going to show you how to give your bees a bath. Again, we have one gallon of water to two teaspoons of bleach. Again, this kills the pollen mites and the chalk brood. Um, and we're going to take this bucket of extracted, oh, all sorts of stuff, pollen mites and cocoons, and we're going to dump it into the bleach solution, just like that. At the dollar store, I bought a spoon. You can use a cat litter scoop, whatever you prefer. But you're going to want to stir this around. See how dirty the water's getting? You're going to want to leave this in the bleach solution for about five minutes. And then I'll show you what to do after they've washed. Now, you're going to, you can wear gloves if this makes you queasy, but I'm just going to use my hand because I don't have gloves right now. You're going to want to get into each one of these cocoons and you're going to want to get all the frass off of it, which is the bee poop. You're going to want to get as many, you're going to kind of rub them around, rub the cocoons around get as much stuff off the cocoons as possible. Ooh, I can smell that bleach. There you go. So I'm just cleaning all these cocoons. We're going to let them sit in this water for about five minutes. So each one of these cocoons is made with a silk. That's how these little bees make their, um, their cocoons. It's just silk cocoons. And um, what you're doing is you're removing the pollen mites and the predators and all the frass off of these cocoons. So I can see a couple that are still covered in. Oh, that's just, that's just a pollen loaf. You'll also find, oh no, those are Houdini fly. <laughs> You'll find all sorts of stuff that crawls around in here. Okay, so we're going to let that soak for five minutes and then I'll show you what to do. Okay, I just went inside and washed my hands to give these little bees about five minutes to soak. Um, and then the main thing with this is you wanna come out and keep stirring them. We wanna make sure all the pollen mites get off the uh, cocoons. As you saw when we were extracting them, there are so many pollen mites. Now the nice thing is the Houdini fly will sink to the bottom. You'll have floating the pollen mites and the, you know, all the little pieces of the pollen loaves that were still in there. Um, and the uh, frass and stuff. So all of this still needs to be cleaned. So I'm actually gonna let this go for about another five minutes. 
So you can soak these up to 15 minutes. You can check them to make sure that the cocoons, now they're starting to get cleaned off. Um, the longer they soak in this bleach, that's when the pollen mites will die and they'll fall off and then that's what you want. You wanna make sure there are no pollen mites left on these cocoons. So let's give them another five minutes and then I'll come back and show you how to wash them. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes now and I want you to see the difference between the five minute mark and now the 10 minute mark. So now these bees are looking a lot cleaner. These cocoons are looking much better. When you see these big clumps of yellow, that big clump there, that is just a big pollen mite clump. So when you see all this yellow, you're doing a good job for your bees. You're removing the harmful pollen mites. So it's so important to do this. So I'm gonna switch over from this spoon because the slats in it are pretty big and I'm gonna get my um, cat litter scoop now and I'm gonna use the scoop. Now the little trick to scooping these and then putting them in the clean water, so next to me here I have the clean water. So we're gonna take them from the dirty water, the bleach water, all the mud and all the stuff and we're gonna put them in the clean water and get them all. So you wanna kind of get some motion with the litter, with the cat litter scoop. And then you wanna, you wanna just twist it around and then you wanna scoop them up. You need to pat them dry and then you're going to plop them in the clean water. And get the remaining. Try to not get as many of those clumps of pollen mites by just kind of moving it around. There you go. That's a trick that Nina taught me. Nina does all our bee baths here at the shop. She's quite the expert with all of this. All right, and then I'm going to do it again. Look at that. A few more stragglers in there. I'll grab those. I'm just gonna grab these with my hands because I don't want them to come in my clean water. All those clumps of pollen mites. There's a couple more. Come on, little bees. Oh, there's some over here. All right, now I'm gonna use this spoon to get bringing because I'll just pick them out. All right, see how when you use this spoon, how many pollen mites you collect? All right, oh, there's a Houdini fly larva. Get, get rid of that and one more cocoon. Is that all you guys see? Any more? Oh, there's a few more on this side. There you go. All right, there we go. All our cocoons are now in the clean water. Now I used this spoon earlier for extracting because I used the tip of it and it was nice, but I actually preferred the pen. But since all these other spoons are dirty, the cat litter scoop and the other spoon, I don't want to put that in with my clean water. So I'm just going to get another spoon and I'm going to rinse these little bees in the nice, fresh, clean water. Now if you see anything on the outside of the cocoons, you can pick them up and rinse them off, but these are looking really good. So again, I don't wanna contaminate this with another spoon that I've used, so I'm just gonna hand pick these out because they're my little bees and I'm taking care of them. And then that way you can able, you're able to see if there's anything on them. You can go get another spoon with, a, with slats in it to do this process, but I just don't wanna make these dirty. So there's some stuff on this one pick that off. Give them a little rinse. So I bought this this strainer or this um, I think it's used for a grease splatter at the dollar store and our screens where we have our bees dry are these massive big screens that we put in a drying rack um, overnight with a fan blasting on them. But for you on a small scale um, we're just going to teach you how to do this um, just using some simple dollar store material. Um, I like this screen because it's going to let them air dry from the top and the bottom, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just setting them on the screen right now. All my bees, I'm going to spread them out. There we go. So now our cocoons are on my strainer on this screen and now I'm going to pat them dry. I'm going to dry my hands off. Pat these dry very gently. 
get as much moisture off of them as possible. Ha, ah, look at that. All right, you know what? I'm gonna new, use another one because I really want these to get dried out. I'll use another one, but I flipped them over and we're gonna get these on the other side. Very gently, just gentle, gentle pressure. All right. Now ours go into a big drying rack overnight and I'll show you a picture of that. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna just take this Again, the dollar store stuff that I just bought. And you're gonna set it up so that the air can get on the top and on the bottom. Now you're gonna to wanna to leave these overnight. If they're still not dry overnight, then a couple of nights. And again, don't bring these inside. You wanna make sure this is all done outside in the cool air. Um, so these are gonna dry um, one to two nights. And as soon as they're all dried out and kind of that nice color where do these go these are the ones that are that are all done so these are completely dry you can see how these are a bit darker so when they turn that lighter color and they're all dry that's when you get to candle them look and see what um, might not be viable anymore to remove and then I'm going to show you how to store it in the refrigerator um, over winter so you're going to put them in their winter hibernation now that your bees have dried overnight, and possibly two nights if they're still feeling a bit damp, this is really important. You want to make sure that your bees are completely dry. You're not going to want to put them in winter storage if there's a little bit of moisture in them because then they can cause them to have mold. And so our bees um, that we just washed for this video are here in the bucket. They're not dried yet, but since I'm at the shop today and we have lots of bees to pick from, I just grabbed a handful of bees to show you what you're looking for. Um, and I purposely put some bees in here that have mono wasp and some bees that are amber color so that we can show you for demonstration purposes purpose what you're looking for when you're candling your bees so what we've done is we're using our screen again and we took a paper towel and you're going to want to double it up I'll show you so not just one layer but just two layers of paper towel and double it up this gives you a bigger range of light and you're not going to blind yourself by looking through it and then you're going to want to turn the light off and I'll show you what to look for when you're candling your own cocoons Okay, now with the light off, it's easier to see the ones that are glowing an amber color that are see-through. And you can also recognize the ones that have been um, damaged by mono wasps. So when you see a cocoon with a hole in it, you can see it under the light, and sometimes you can just see it with your natural eye. Those are no longer viable bees. There's not a bee in here. It, it was um, the mono wasp killed the little baby bee. So you want to remove those. And so here's one that has glows a bit amber, so that's not viable. And then here's another one. So when you see it kind of partially amber and then the rest is not, that is not a viable cocoon. Um, you wanna make sure to pick through and you can also hear it. You can hear the crackling, kind of like a Rice Krispie. Um, and then here's another one that's not viable. And here's another one that's not viable. I put some in here because we have so many to show you. Um, for this video, I wanted to show you what they look like that are not viable, so. I grabbed a handful of not viable ones because we hand we hand picked through three million cocoons under this huge light table. I'll show you a picture of that. But under our big light table, we're able to see a lot of stuff. So um, when you're doing it at home, you just use a simple flashlight to do it yourself. You just move your cocoons around. And so there's now see this one is one of those partial ones that is amber in the front and dark in the back. So that is not a viable bee. You can see kind of the bee carcass inside. Um, let's see, do I see any other ones? Oh, see this? There's a hole in this one. That's a mono wasp. You want to remove that. And then this one is not viable as well. You can see that one is not viable. Oh, and there's another one. Everything else looks really good. So now I'll show you how to store these nice, healthy, clean cocoons in your refrigerator over winter. All right, now that we've candled all our cocoons, I wanted to show you the difference. So this is our pile of healthy cocoons that we picked through that have really good viable bees in there. And this is the pile of cocoons that we picked out that are amber or have the mono wasp hole inside. 
So it's really important to know that you have to candle because you're going to find all sorts of things. You can't just wash and clean and then put your bees in hibernation. You've got to make sure you're candling and picking through all the viable and non-viable ones. So now that we've got our clean bees, and I know this is a small sample because I was just doing a video to teach you, you're probably going to have a lot more cocoons than this. So I wanted to show you two options, two ways of putting these in hibernation over winter. Um, this is the little container that I got at um, the dollar store. And inside I have half of it with a nice dry paper towel. And then for the humidity part of it, I, uh, we got this wet to add humidity. Now, if you do this process, you're going to want to spritz this and check on this and make sure that this paper towel doesn't dry out. This has to remain wet and damp throughout the whole season. We also poke some holes that you need to have air and ventilation so that these bees can, um, you know, have that oxygen. So that's how this setup is. I got this kit at um, Costco. It actually is where I store my fruits and vegetables. They're really great. So they have the air vents on the side. Um, and then there's a tray on the bottom where I can put a teaspoon of water to provide the humidity. And then I put a paper towel. Oops. I put a paper towel on the bottom of it just to store my cocoons. So you can see that there's holes and then the paper towel. So either one works. Um, I'll divide this up just to, to show you the two different ways. So I'm going to take a few cocoons here. I'm going to plop them in here. You're not going to want them piled on top of each other. You're going to want to make sure that they're spread out in the bee house, in the, in the, in the little container. And then you're going to put the lid on. And then the best place to store these cocoons is in your crisper drawer in your refrigerator. Um, I have kids that like to stand with the door open and figure out what they want for food. If the temperature um, increases or lowers um, it, and it warms up that refrigerator, your bees might start emerging. So you're gonna wanna check on your bees. You're gonna wanna turn those cocoons every few weeks to make sure that they are um, not stacked on top of each other and that we're not having any mold issues. And you're gonna wanna store them in the refrigerator at about 37 to 43 degrees. You want your temperature to be controlled and that's usually in your crisper drawer. So that is how you clean your mason bee cocoons. Next spring, you're gonna release these little bees. You're gonna to wanna to have an emergence tube to put them in. I don't have one here, but I've, I've talked about it before. I, you can use a jello box or a pudding box, poke a hole in it so that the bees can emerge. You can't put loose cocoons up on top of your nesting material. You have to put them in an emergence tube, otherwise they're gonna be a feast for the birds. Um, so yeah, you'll just wanna release these little bees next spring, all healthy and clean. Happy pollinating, everyone. Bye.